African society. But as we are on the topic of good governance, have to very quickly underline four conditions of good governance. First, peace and security is number one common good because peace and security is the precondition of living in any habitat. Millionaires can hire private security, but ultimately security is to be function number one of the state, of the government. And government must be empowered and take responsibility to create and maintain peace and security. And one by one in all the African countries, we are all able to point the lack of security. Second condition, create condition of providing to and for enabling all citizens provide for themselves basic needs, as I say, and other needs which enable all citizens fulfilling life through honest and using fairly and equitably the national resources. Three, third condition, especially for Africa, continuing national building by promoting unity and solidarity of people as well as building common national values. And the fourth condition, condition condi continuously improving and developing the people and their nation to acquire development which enable people to be happy and healthy and fulfilling their life. One cannot deny that much has been made of democracy and democratic governance as prescribed by the concept of good governance. Some African states have adopted mechanisms which enable putting in place the political leadership which leads government that fulfill the above common good needs of citizen and the state. However, many Africans have failed to make the full condition as the working priority of leadership and government. Given that, prosperity which only creates an additional number of millionaires why only help the majority to question it and to mobilize to resist it. I want to just quote passing by. Africa continues to face intrastate conflict and terror networks. Rich countries as South Southern Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo has been and continue to be ravaged by violence. Terrorism also poses new and particularly complex challenge in Africa. Of course, you are all talking about Boko Haram, yes, but terrorism everywhere poses new and particularly complex challenge in Africa, everywhere. Terrorist groups are showing greater capacity and continue to develop their sources of financing, arms, and recruits. This is the case in Mali, in Central African Republic, in Somalia, in Kenya, in Uganda, and unfortunately also here in Nigeria. So despite the fact that Africans call each other brothers. The blood of many Africans has been spilled and continues to spill as a result of their religious belief and ethnicity. The question here is that why we called 
brother turn into enemies. In Central African Republic, for example, where my country is engaged with a lot of others. In Southern Sudan, in Mali, in Rwanda. Are we supposed not to quote the Rwanda genocide? In Somalia, etc. So I want to end by underlining the role of religion in African conflict. And not only in African conflict, all over the world. Why religion could serve and has indeed served as an instrument of social harmony, it has and continued to serve as a motivation for violence such as terroric, terrorist attacks which are often justified as, I quote and quote, please, holy welfare. Religion intolerance, fundamentalism, and extremism are driving many conflicts around the world. I want just to let you know, or to let you remind that Kosovo or Bosnia in the middle of Europe were the same examples. But Afghanistan, Iraq, and etc. Headlines, chronicle conflict infused with religious dynamics. Just as significant but less visible are places where religious actors have promoted conflict resolution and peace, as in South Africa, Mozambique, etc. However, many conflicts are in Africa inspired by the blend of Islam, Christianity, and traditional religion belief. This is true also here in Nigeria, where religion has been used to cause conflict. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Muslim leaders and some Christian leaders are still using religion for that conflict. Given that, one can legitimately question why is religion a factor in war at all when all the main faiths advocate peace? And let me tell you that in my long career of <coughs> humanitarian intervention in conflict, only one of them on 35 was not also involved by religion reason. And it was, it will make you laugh, it was Salvador and Honduras football war. For the rest, you can be sure that religion is somewhere hidden. Okay, as I have been asked, and I want to respect my word, not to talk too long, I want to end. I was uh, supposed to talk about the role of women in Africa, and I want to underline that, the role, the necessary role of women, not only to get peace, but to get development. And this is, in, on your continent, absolutely key and crucial. So, Half of my pages I'm escaping from. I want my <coughs> Mr. Governor, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, to end by a little and very optimistic conclusion, even if I was a bit pessimist inside my speech. Despite the fact that due to poverty and instability, Africa is by far one of the continents which need humanitarian assistance. African people 
and mainly